Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rajesh Vaidishwaran. They call me RV, just like the Risk Five. I'm uh, from Netronome. I am the director of engineering and uh, senior principal architect. I'm, my background is from software. I'm a software guy um, at heart, and I've been doing hardware stuff. So. Uh, I would like to thank, at the outset, um, Steven Zagorianakis, who's also in the audience here, um, and Gavin Stark. Uh, they co-collaborated with me on this presentation. I hope uh, many of you had the opportunity to hear Steve talk yesterday about building massively parallel systems. This talk and that talk are co related uh, very closely because we uh, build massively parallel systems with thousands of risk cores and make it efficient with um, a command-driven data transfer protocol. There has been substantial interest um, in data transfer. And uh, we have heard um, TileLink multiple times throughout this conference at this point. And uh, there is also C6, and there is OpenCAPI. And in the area of shared storage, there is now Zen Z, uh, Gen Z. <clears throat> what we have found at Netronome is, uh, as we have built a, you know, a very high performance and massively parallel system, that there is a need for a third kind of protocol. Something that, as a programmer, you get to control. And something that can be extended across chip-to-chip, uh, chiplet-to-chiplet, chiplet to chiplet, and uh, also intra-chip. We also found the need to extend the RISC-V instruction set with our custom instructions so that you can um, enable this kind of programmer managed data transfer. The other part um, that I will touch upon here is transactional memories, which uh, Steve's talk was uh, you know, he talked more in detail about. And how with our extensions to the RISC-V chipset that we can natively leverage transactional memories. So what is transactional memory? We have the concept of CPUs and you take work and you give it to the CPU. You take data, you process it inside the core. Transactional memories are where we do it the other way around, where you have data sitting in memory and we perform operations in proximity to where the data is. So it's very closely coupled. It's um, hardwired transaction types, things such as atomic transactions, stats updates, CRCs, and even crypto. So the efficiency of moving the data in close proximity to a transactional processing engine is much higher and scales with massively parallel systems. And how do we drive this? So this is the general concept of uh, building massively parallel systems that Steve's talk was about. And this talk we will just focus on how we drive the data and how we drive the instructions between the cores and the transactional memories. So the idea is that it's command driven and you can pass data along with the commands. The commands are very specific and the commands may or may not need to produce results for you and we can, uh, results that you need to see. We'll have examples of both types. So what is Netronome's instruction-driven switch fabric? So it's a scalable interconnect. It is a flexible fabric that is distributed and it's programmer managed. It has the ability to transport off the shelf interfaces like C6, PCIe. It supports transactional memories natively. And it scales from chip to chip 
in a chiplet system or island to island inside a die. And I'll talk about what islands mean here. A picture that I've shown here is an NFP, a Netronome flow processor, and a couple of data processors hanging off of that inside an MCM. And there is a chip-to-chip -chip connection between two NFPs when the second NFP um, off of it is hanging a, an FPGA or a coprocessor. So we show um, C6 as the interface here. We have coherency, and that's a non-coherent interface to the FPGA. It's a PCIe card. So why is this important? In a system where you have really small, it's a, it's a really small chip, it's a really small package, and you have multiple interfaces, it doesn't matter because you can have, you have enough pins, you, can, you have enough wires that you can put there and it won't impact the cost of your package, in, impact the cost of your product. Whereas if you have thousands of cores like we do, and you have to connect to external data processors and external um, chips, then you really cannot afford the cost of having thousands of wires, millions of wires going across for the different types of interfaces. So you need a shared set of pins. And that's really the only way to scale to very massively parallel systems. A practical implementation of one such system is what we have done. This shows uh, a Netronome chip with about 1,000 risk cores. And we have it organized as islands. And this chip processes network uh, data. It's a network processor in hundreds of gigabits per second. We show that we can be coherent with a host. And you can also expand to processing on a second NFP. The basic data flow here is such that packets come in through the network. We will assign it one of the memory islands. Then a core is given an event saying that there is a packet to be processed. At which point, the core takes the packet as in and knows that there is a packet in one of the memory islands to be processed and issues transactional memory operations so that if we have to do things like, um, do I have to change the IP header? Do I, uh, you know, do I have to apply policy on it? Do I have to do L7 D packet inspection on it? Do I have to do crypto on it? Do I have to um, discard this packet, send it out to the host or send it out to the network? Those are all things that need to happen in a 100 gigabits per second system. If you uh, think about it, it's about three nanoseconds per 64 byte packet is the amount of time you have. So if you wanna do three microseconds worth of processing, you'll need something like a thousand cores. A system like this is connected through an instruction driven switch fabric. And it allows for you to scale, uh, you know, connect between islands to islands, and you can scale your implementation from small to large fairly nicely. It allows for equal access to memory hierarchies, all types of memories, you know, whether it's DRAM um, backed memory island backed by a cache, or whether it is access to the host memory over a host interface, or it is just a non-cached transactional memory. And that is the crux of how we build that kind of an efficiency into the system. So how do we manage the data over the instruction-driven switch fabric? I've shown um, a subset of the islands that we implement just for illustration purposes. And I've shown the ISF fabric 
um, as really two parts. It's really, if you think of it, it's more two virtual parts of a single fabric. And this shows that we have the Netronome chip connected to two data processors, one over tile link, one over a proprietary protocol. And on the side, I show what really is happening to one of those processors. Just uh, for illustration purposes, it is set to the side, is we have access to the host's cache, the host's memory um, through a cache. If you see, if you follow the white lines, um, those are remote cache coherency operations that we can do over the instruction-driven switch fabric. The yellow lines, or the orange lines, uh, show that you can do transactional memory operations over the switch fabric. The reason this works for us, and the reason this generally works, is, the, is because the fabric is just agnostic to what is going over it. The endpoints are the ones that get to decide how to interpret what the data is. So you, today, if it is C6, it's an RFPC island and a data processor. If it's tile link, it's an RFPC island sending tile link over to a data processor over the ISF. And at the endpoints, they get to decide that, yeah, I know I speak only tile link, so what I'm getting is tile link. And we do this with end-to-end -end credits, that everybody who has a resource keeps track of the credits. Transactional memory operations are handled exactly the same way for us. There is no difference. When we send a, an operation to be performed, a CRC to be updated, stats to be updated, those things flow exactly the same way through the uh, ISF. And the beauty of that is the programmer, the programmer drivenness of this is very important because um, in, a, in a fabric where multiple entities are connected to each other over it, the person who actually writes the code for it gets to have, should have the flexibility of actually making it as optimal for their application as possible. I think we heard uh, Dr. Patterson today, and uh, we heard quite a few people um, talking about domain-specific acceleration. So we don't claim to know what your domain is and what you want to accelerate it for. You know what you're building. You're, the guys who are going to program your um, chip knows how they want to extract the maximum efficiency out of it. And what we offer is a general fabric that allows both to happen. So in summary, this has been a very exciting uh, time for uh, CPUs in general, uh, with RISC-V doing to CPUs what um, open source is done in general to software, which is allow lots of people to work on problems and build communities. We believe Netronome's ISF extends that to interfaces. It's practical, it's unified, and it's a general purpose fabric. And as I mentioned before, it's protocol agnostic, and it links endpoints. The endpoints get to decide what the payload is. And where we find it works extremely well with how people want to implement risks is it scales extremely well with chiplets, with MCMs, data processors and network processor communication, and intra-chip interconnects. Uh, we have extensions for custom zero and custom one that allow us to make, combine the power of a RISC-V and combine the, and transactional memories so that we can natively leverage transactional memories in, a, uh, in the Netronome RISC-V system. We all understand that different interfaces and protocols are needed for different functions, and that's not going to go away. 
you know, we, we are not going to solve that problem in any specific way. But we offer a very practical and efficient way to solve that problem by allowing a transport that scales. The example that I talked about that we have implemented is a multi-core uh, high-speed networking system, night networking chip. Something that um, processes millions of packets per second. The efficiency of processing a packet and being able to spend three to five microseconds is something that you can very practically and easily get with a thousand cores and very efficient transactional memories is what we've found. So I just wanted to uh, share those thoughts with you guys. You guys should go down and check out the ODSA um, Alliance. It's the Open Domain Specific Accelerator Alliance that uh, Netronome and a few companies are a part of. And you can, you're welcome to join us and work with us. This is really a, an alliance that we're building to leverage work in the community so that we can all work together. Netronom's ISF is available uh, there in some form. And uh, you know, if we want to further this conversation, we can take it outside there. So that's all I have for today. Thank you for listening.